It's October 19th, 2018 in Michigan, Southeast Michigan. And uh, we're, we're starting to have some cold nights. We're starting to have uh, nights near freeze point. And uh, so the old trusty uh, rocket stove is uh, gonna be needed here pretty quick. And uh, my burner had at least three full seasons on it and it was done. <laughs> you know, I'd repaired my burner once. I'll show it to you in a second. And uh, just to go over it, there's another video that I have on uh, YouTube about the operation of this. You can find it if you scroll back through my videos and uh, talks, there's a couple of them. And it kind of talks about how it works, you know, how you get started and stuff like that. Uh, it's a, basically it's a five by five burn chamber, five by five, five by five feed tube. And um, we'll take a look at the old burner here uh, that served me well, but it is done. This, this thing, uh, this drops for, you know, anybody that doesn't know, I, I think it's pretty obvious. This burner drops down into your uh, feed tube and ends up, ends up sitting at the bottom inside here about like that. It bottoms, sits down right on the bottom. So uh, anyway, this was just made out of, this was just made out of mild steel, just two by two angle, eighth inch, two by two angle. And uh, it's hard to even tell what it looked like because it's so burned away. Believe it or not, I was running it like this last year. I could get it to start. You had to play around with it a bit to get it to start, but uh, because the pellets tended to fall out and you know it was but I could get it going and once it went once I got it going believe it or not it still ran um, it pulls air from the back you can see how distorted this is from the heat and uh, the air as it sits in the burn basket the air comes in from the back side and uh, just the natural draft of the chimney is what sucks the air through there and the pellets feed in from on top and there used to be a series of holes here that I'll show you in a minute with the new burn, the new one that I'm going to build. And when those, when that went away, then I went to a, a piece of plate steel that I bolted on here and drilled holes in that plate steel and bolted it on. These are the bolts. And then I got about another season out of that until it went away. And uh, like I say, at the end, this is all I had. But we're going to build a new one, and this time we're going to build it out of stainless. So uh, hopefully it'll, we'll get a little bit more time out of it, a little bit more. Everybody said stainless should do the job. So what are the dimensions on this thing? Uh, firstly, show you the design. The bottom, or the, the these, um, these two, uh, yeah, here. Okay, they're going to go like this and like this. And that's, hopefully I'm getting it on the camera here, I gotta check. Okay, that's these two pieces that'll, that'll make up the bottom of the burn chamber. And then the top two will go like this. And, am I getting that on camera? Yeah. So this will get welded to that. And that 45 there will line up with the edge. That's, that's this 45 right here. Okay. And then I will butt weld with stainless rod. I will butt weld these two together. And then this piece will sit across the top. about like that and it will be welded across the top and that that's what will hold that'll hold everything together you know that's this piece here you can't hardly tell it's a piece of angle because it's full of full of slag I, I drip oil onto this um, this piece of angle uh, with my little oil dripper you don't you don't have to it's just I get spare oil so I do it you know and the holes are just to allow the oil to run down. Now, what are the dimensions? You're going to want to know. Obviously, that's the important part. 
This is all two by two angle. And this is eight inches long, two inch by two inch. These two pieces are eight inches long. The top pieces are also eight inches long. And that's a 45. And like I say, you just line that up with the edge when you weld it together. You, you clamp it together and then you weld it around the side. Uh, now the holes. They're 3 8 and it's not really anything specific. I just kind of spaced them, you know, out here on the 2x2, two two, sort of even. And then they are 600 thousandths apart. So just over half an inch. No specific reason why 600 thousandths, it just worked that way and it's 800 thousandths or a little over three quarters of an inch between here, between these, and the, and the same thing is true on the bottom. Now these holes span four inches and they span five inches on the top. And that's because when the air goes through, it comes in at a greater angle. So uh, you got about, well, four and a half inches of holes where the holes on the top, and you got four inches where the holes on the bottom. And like I say, they're spaced 600 thousandths apart. You know, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It's just, you know, that's what I found works for the amount of air that you need to flow through there. So uh, that's it. And, then it. and then this piece is also a two by two angle that I happen to cut to an inch and a half, hopefully you can see that, because, because this, this total height here, you want, it to, you want it to be able to feed into your five by five um, burn chamber with some space. I did not want it to be tight, so it's gonna only be you know three and a half inches roughly from here to here. When it's when it's all stacked together, when it's when it's put together, um, should be able to do this. Wish I had another set of hands, but you get the idea. This will sit here, that'll sit there, like so. And the only reason I drill those holes is because I'm going to weld in there. That's just to help make it a more secure weld. Um, so one more thing, one final point. Um, the burn tube is at 22 and a half degrees. But this angle here is cut at 45 degrees. So why is that? Well, the reason is when you set that in there, you have a gap at the back. And that gap is important because after this thing is run for, oh, an hour or two and, 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 and the ash is starting to fill up in the burner, uh, you want to be able to get in there and I go in there with a wire from behind. I got a probe wire that I go in and I just swipe it through there. It's um, it's this wire. I take and just go in there and I go underneath that burner in that gap that I just showed you. And what that does is that releases some of the ash. Um, I should mention there's a piece of, I've got to drill holes in this. This is a new piece. Well, not new, it's old, but I cut it off. <laughs> i got to drill a bunch of holes in it. And that lets the ash flow through. You can see in there i got expanded metal. It's burned away. So I set this piece on there. I'm going to drill a series of holes in there. And that'll be underneath the burner. And then when I when I run my wire through there, the ash will fall through the holes, and it'll fall into the little burn chamber down below. Now, you don't have to have that burn chamber, that ash chamber, down below like I do. I just incorporated that into the design. I'm not even really sure you need it because if you once you stir the ash, the ash just goes almost to nothing. It crumbles. It's just like nothing. So. But with my design and the holes that I'll have in that, in this, I'm going to drill a series of holes in here. Uh, 
just to let the asphalt through. And um, my old my old piece was wore out. That wasn't was on here. It was just burned through. It was about a year, two years old maybe. So anyway, that's the reason why you have these cut at 45, sitting in a 22 and a half degree feed is for that access at the back to underneath to, to, to scrape your ash. So uh, that's it. Um, I think that's all there is to know about it. Uh, other than you got to weld, you got to be able to weld it together. So hopefully you got a welder or a friend with a welder. And uh, I just bought some 308 stainless rod. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to weld it together right now. But I wanted it in pieces so that I could show you. And uh, okay, that's it. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, feel free to ask. Talk to you later.